for translational dynamics, we have these. The rotational version will be net torque equals to I alpha. For every action torque, there is an equal and opposite reaction torque. And to find the work done by a torque, we will do torque times the angular displacement times the cosine the angle between the two. And the power is work divided by time, which is the torque times the angular velocity times the cosine the angle between these two. Now, if these two are both uh, clockwise or both uh, counterclockwise, then we would say they are in the same direction and this will be cosine zero degrees. If these two, they are one clockwise, the other one counterclockwise, this will be cosine 180, which will give us a negative one. And here we have rotational kinetic energy, one half I omega squared. Work and energy, they are in joules. So the rotational version ones, they are still joules and the power will be joules per second. We have then problems like these. When we have objects in the system that are rotating and objects doing translational motion. They are connected by a string that does not slip and uh, these rotational axes do not have friction. Let's say we're looking for the acceleration of the box and uh, the tension in the string. For this scenario, because uh, this pulley is light, which means uh, we can ignore its uh, rotational inertia, so we do not have to write any equation for this one. So these two are very similar. There's one box that's doing translational motion and uh, one object that's doing rotational motion. To find the acceleration and the tension, we have to write a force equation for everything that's doing translational motion and write a net torque equals to I alpha for the object that does rotational motion. Let's just look at this system. The acceleration goes down and we have M2G going down and the tension going up. So the net force equals to MA for this box gives us uh, M2G minus tension equals to M2 times A. For this disk, we have to write net torque equals to I alpha. And uh, the net torque acting on it is produced by the tension in the string. So the net torque is the tension times the lever arm since the string wraps around this part that has a radius R1, the lever arm is R1. And this equals to I, which is I1, times alpha. Because uh, they are connected by this string, so when this string goes down by one meter, that string pulls by one meter. So the linear motion, the acceleration here, equals to the tangential acceleration over there. And since the tangential acceleration is uh, r times alpha, which means we can replace alpha with the a over r, and this tangential acceleration and that a is the same, so it's just the a over r right here. And of course, this r is the r1, because that's where the string wraps around. We can use these two equations to solve for our two unknowns any way we want. But it can be convenient if we can stack these two equations together and add them and cancel the negative t with the positive t. But that will require us to divide by r1 on both sides first. So I'm going to divide by r1 on this side and divide by r1 on this side. Then the r1s would cancel. So when we add these two equations, now the tension would cancel and then we would have m2g on this side and uh, m2 times a plus i1 divided by r1 squared times a. So we can factor the a out and put i1 over r1 squared right here. And then we can use this to solve for the acceleration if we divide by this on both sides and then plug the A back in there or there to find the tension. If we write two equations for this problem, it will be exactly the same thing. Another type of question I can ask is, uh, what is the landing speed of this box after it falls a distance h?
In these scenarios, the boxes would do constant acceleration motion. So if you have already found the acceleration, then we can use kinematics to find the final speed. Or without the acceleration, we can use the conservation of energy to find the landing speed. If the system does not lose any energy to the friction or air resistance, then the total mechanical energy before and after would be equal. The total mechanical energy before is m2 times g times the h. Before, there's no kinetic energy if the system starts from rest. Afterwards, the box does translational motion, so it has uh, 1 half m v squared. This thing does rotational motion, so it has uh, 1 half uh, i omega squared. Now, because uh, they're connected by the string, so the omega would be v over r. And since the string wraps around the r1, so this is the r1. And that's what we can use to find v2.